Hello, in this video we'll look at a number of different Raspberry Pi music players that you can build yourself from simple to complex. Let's start by looking at a very complex one. Here I've placed a Pi 4 inside this case from an old XM radio satellite tuner, replacing everything that was inside to turn it into a Pi music player. The power button is wired into a Pico microcontroller which gracefully starts up and shuts down the Pi. The other buttons are wired into the Pi's GPIO pins and perform various functions like choosing a playlist. There's a high-res LCD for displaying album art and song info, along with a playback progress bar. It rivals the features and audio quality of $1,500 units, but you can build it using about $120 in parts and some open source software. I'll show you how, but first let's look at another retrofit Raspberry Pi music player. This one is built onto a boombox where a satellite radio module used to sit. It uses a Pi 3B Plus connected to a 5-inch touchscreen, and since it uses Wi-Fi, it can easily be moved from room to room. But that's not all. Let me show you one more player. This one is designed to fit into the empty space in my car's dashboard for an open-source, non-trackable music experience on the go. You only need to plug in power from the cigarette lighter, and the built-in FM stereo transmitter sends the Pi 3's audio to the car's radio. It has a touchscreen for control and a 3D printed case that can be adjusted to fit various size dashboard spaces. This one's about $75 in parts and includes 256 gigabytes of internal storage. So let's look at how to build Raspberry Pi music players like these. Let's start with the simplest, cheapest player you can make with a Pi. The Pi 0W or 02W is $15. You can use the Raspberry Pi Imager to flash an SD card with free music player software such as Volumio. We'll look at some other alternatives too. Insert the flashed micro SD card into the Pi and power it up. Once your Pi connects to Wi-Fi, you can open a browser and start playing your music files, which can be located on the Pi's internal storage, an attached USB drive, or a network shared drive. You can then browse your files in folder or album view and have full playback control. There's even a smartphone app for controlling your Pi's Volumio instance. But keep in mind that the music plays back on the Pi itself, so, where do you hear the sound? Getting audio out of the Pi Zero can be tricky though. You could try pairing a Bluetooth speaker, but that's hit or miss in my experience. For about $8, you can get a mini HDMI adapter and plug it into the Pi, and then plug the other end into a monitor or a stereo amplifier that has an HDMI input. That's pretty limiting though, as most low-end audio equipment does not have an HDMI audio input. For $5 more than this setup, you can get a Pi 3A Plus that has an actual audio output jack. Load the same software on there and plug it into a powered speaker or stereo amplifier, no $5 adapter needed. This is probably the easiest player setup, and while the audio quality is okay, it's not considered high fidelity, let alone high resolution. For better quality audio, you're going to need an external DAC or digital to analog converter. They convert the digital audio file played back by the Pi into analog signals you can feed into an amplifier, and they do it with better quality than the Pi can on its own. They come in many sizes and form factors, as well as a wide price range. By adding this $20 Pi DAC Plus hat to the 3A Plus we set up earlier, we now have better quality audio than we were getting out of the onboard audio jack. How much better? That's a good question. For one thing, the amount of background noise is lower. It just sounds a bit better to my ears. This is one upgrade I do agree with, though I personally would not spend more than $100 on a DAC, and even $50 is probably overkill for most people. Once you get above $100, the improvement in audio quality can be very difficult to detect. Another software option for Pi Music Playback is Headless PlexAmp. PlexAmp is the dedicated music playback app for Plex, a popular media player. 
Headless means that the Pi has no monitor or keyboard attached like the other players we've looked at. You can also control this instance of PlexAmp from a browser on your network or their dedicated smartphone app. Unlike the other software presented in this video, PlexAmp is not open source and you'll need a monthly paid Plex Pass to use this setup. But if you're already invested in the Plex ecosystem, it's great music playback software that rivals the audio streaming services at half the price. You can connect the PlexAmp Pi to an amplifier and use a nice wall-mounted touchscreen to control a whole house audio system like I've done here on my existing home automation panel. In addition to Volumio, Mood Audio is another similar free open source audiophile streamer for the Pi. Mood is the software I've used for most of my builds. I like its many features and simple API. Let's look at the car player first. It uses this 5 inch touchscreen with the Pi 3 mounted on top. I designed and 3D printed the faceplate to match the empty space in the dashboard of my car. I also printed some small brackets to hold the screen assembly in place. 12 volts from the car's cigarette lighter is connected to this jack, which feeds a 12 volt to 5 volt converter that plugs into the Pi's micro USB power jack. To get the audio out to my car's radio, I'm using this USB connected FM radio transmitter. What's really neat about this $10 board is that it includes an onboard DAC. So when you plug it into the Pi's USB port, it recognizes it as an audio device. It converts the audio to analog and then transmits it over an FM frequency you can set yourself. Next, let's look at my Pi touchscreen boombox player. Here it is in its original form with the XM radio module attached. The unit costs $23 at Goodwill. Removing the XM radio module, you can see how it connects to the unit. I knew that this proprietary connector had power, audio, and antenna signals, and that if I wanted my new player to seamlessly fit there, I would somehow have to interface with it. So the radio module would have to be sacrificed so I could grab its connector. Initially, I tried using a solder sucker to get the connector off, but that didn't work. Next, I tried soldering wick to try to suck up the solder, but that connector was just welded in too tightly. So, in desperation, I snipped it out as carefully as I could with my wire cutters, my go-to tool when all else fails. Amazingly, it came out in one piece, sort of. And I was able to tap out and then solder small wires onto the connector's pins for audio and power and extend them to a header so I could connect the Pi. Next, I designed and 3D printed a bracket to hold the touchscreen assembly in place. For better sounding audio, I'm using this tiny I2S DAC that connects to the Pi's GPIO pins and provides decent quality analog audio out. Now I have a portable touchscreen music streamer which sounds pretty good. This particular model uses a rotary encoder for the volume control, which is nice because they tend not to get noisy with age. Now, this box came with a 12 volt power supply, but it also has a place for eight D cell batteries, four here and four here. Internally, it converts the voltage to five volts available on the connector. So let's load in eight D cells and see how well that works. Hmm. I also noticed that it has a really nice woofer, or subwoofer on the bottom. Pretty nice. So here we have a Pi 3B Plus with a 5 inch touchscreen running on D batteries, see? No wires, and being very portable and heavy. In case you were wondering, eight brand new D cells last less than two hours in this configuration. 
That's around $10 an hour in batteries, so not a very cost-effective power source. Finally, let's look at the Audiophile Pi streamer I built inside an old XM tuner case. In an earlier video linked in the description, I used a 1990s Sony tuner case to build a music player. This is an upgrade with more features and a more contemporary looking case. It's a model XRT12 by Polk Audio and was released in 2005 for $250, but I picked it up recently for 20 bucks. When it was released, it was billed as a reference tuner for the best possible XM radio experience in a home audio component. It's a solidly built unit with lots of connectors on the back and high quality circuit components on the inside. None of that matters though, because I just want to use the case and the buttons on the front for my Pi Music Streamer. First, I removed the front panel to save for later. Then, I removed the power supply board the main board with the tuner and output jacks, and finally the transformer. That left me lots of space to add my parts. But first I made a full mock-up of all of the necessary hardware on a piece of wood so I could work out all of the connections and test my custom Python software. The heart of the player is a Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Notice that I'm also using a Pi Pico microcontroller to help gracefully boot up and shut down the Pi when the power button is pressed. Did you know that you can momentarily connect GPIO 3 to ground to start up the Pi, and momentarily connect a different user-defined GPIO to ground to shut down the Pi? The Pico pulses these two relays as needed to connect the appropriate pin to ground. The Pico also controls these two analog switches, which are connected to the LCD. When the Pi is booting up, which can take up to 30 seconds, the Pico has control of the display, and it puts a startup message on the screen, so you know the device is actually doing something. That's one of the small but important features that makes this a more polished device. The full wiring diagrams are available in the linked GitHub repo. I also removed the display board and replaced the original LCD with a newer 2-inch display. It's a little smaller than the original display, but it has a Python library that's really easy to work with. It also uses this nifty ribbon cable connector system known as iSpy to make connecting SPI-based displays a lot easier. All of the front panel buttons are also on this board and are wired into the Pi 4's GPIO pins. I started transferring components from my mock-up to the new case while connecting everything together. Note the use of a swirly aluminum mounting bracket on the right that made securing all of the parts much easier. A link to the product is in the description. As more components were added, the wiring became more complex. So let's talk a little more about DAX, the device that converts the music files on the Pi into audio you can listen to on your amplified speakers. In a high-end component unit such as this, I like to use an outboard DAC or one built into an amplifier that accepts a digital signal, such as this one. I get lost inside my thoughts and when... To get a high-quality digital output, there are a number of Pi hats to choose from such as the Hi-Fi Berry Digi2 Pro I used in a previous Pi Streamer video. A viewer suggested that I try the more expensive Allo Digi1 for even higher fidelity digital audio output. I was skeptical since there really shouldn't be any audible differences among digital audio output cards, but I picked one up anyway, and it's in here. It sounds great, however I have a hard time telling the difference between the two but I can rest assured that I have the highest quality digital audio output possible, and isn't that what being an audiophile is all about? Note though that this hat only provides digital audio out, but I also wanted an analog output for the most versatility. For that, I found a cheap $10 DAC from AliExpress that I connected to one of the two digital outputs of the hat. And guess what? It sounds great. Now both digital and analog audio outputs from the player are available simultaneously. I've also extended the Pi's Ethernet and power to the back of the unit, reusing some of the holes from the original tuner's jacks. 
The custom software on the Pico is written in CircuitPython, a programming language designed to simplify programming of microcontrollers. I extended the USB connection to the Pico out to the back of the unit. Throwing this toggle switch allows for editing the code on the Pico from an attached computer, such as my favorite Pi 400. Like the previous audio file streamer I made a video about, this one is running all of my custom code in a Docker container. Docker is easy to install on the Mood OS and completely isolates my code and dependencies from interfering with Mood. Essentially, my code does two things. First, it listens for changes from Mood and updates the LCD display accordingly. And second, it reads any button presses detected by the Pi's GPIO pins and uses the Mood API to tell Mood what to do. So there you have it, a variety of Pi-based music streamers from super simple to very complex. If you're interested in building one of these, check out the video description for links to the part pages, GitHub repository, and other information. Let me know in the comments what you think of these Pi projects or music streamers in general. They are a great getting started project for any Raspberry Pi, and as you can see, they can be made in a variety of form factors and configurations. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon for my next project. Thanks for watching.